Good evening, everyone, and hope you guys are having a really good uh, evening wherever you are in the world. Um, I'm Martin Sharp, and I'm here today joined by David Marsh, who is a expert business consultant and has been working in industry for quite a long time. So without further ado, I will introduce him onto the screen. So David, tell us a little bit about yourself and what we're going to be talking about this evening. Good evening, Martin. Uh, welcome, everybody. And firstly, if you've had a... a the option of walking out in the storm or joining us, and you decide to join us, thank you very much indeed. Uh, it, it's a good choice, let me tell you. Um, yeah, so our business uh, works with organizations, um, usually from two years established upwards, and uh, the idea is to help them get to the next stage. And one of the areas, in that, certainly in the last 12 months or so, that we've been working with those companies on is around personalities. Uh, the personalities of the people in the company, and then the personality of the company itself and what it actually means. Um, so that's, that's what I wanted to share tonight, is some of the learnings we've had from that and how that might uh, work for uh, people on the call. Excellent. Fantastic. So, yeah, please take it away. The, the okay. chair is yours. Thank you very much. So let's share the screen. Okay, so tonight we're going to be using a bit of multimedia, so it means moving between PowerPoint and, and online. So if you can uh, stick with us throughout that, that would be great. And the thing about personalities, it's when you understand them and get them to work for you, I'd say that's probably become the most powerful tool that we've been able to share with companies and make the biggest single difference. So. Uh, all I'll say is listen up because it seems to work for uh, many, many clients that uh, we work with. Um, so tonight I'm going to share with you three stories really. Uh, that's around you as an individual and your personality and what that, that means. Um, how to you can win more business using personalities in general. And the big one, how you can build your company rapidly using the personalities of the people within it. And at the end of the session, I'm going to share with you the, the tools that we've been using tonight because uh, it's one of those areas that, for some reason, it seems to be a bit of a secret. But uh, once you know about it, it, it's going to change the way that you approach the way you do business. Um, I, I know it will because that's what Arkansas tell us. So let's start with you. Well, actually, let's start with uh, Donald Trump because that's somebody that most people know something about and you'll be aware of his no fake news or his, his no uh, fake news headline um, and with Donald because some people know something about him um, imagine now you are you get a phone call and it says Donald would like to meet you to learn all about what you do and you need to be there at nine o'clock in the morning Wednesday morning UK time is coming over to meet you so how are you going to prepare for that? Well, one of the ways you can prepare for it is to have a look at Donald's personality and what it means. So using the power of multimedia, I'm going to jump over to this. Now this is um, a tool we use called Crystal or Crystal Nose. And this is based on everything that Donald has ever done on LinkedIn, certainly, and wider across the internet. And as you no doubt know, he's a big user of social media. So there's quite a lot to go on. Um, so right at the top, what this tool has done, it's, it's taken everything that Donald has done online and has a look and says, well, actually, look, this person tends to communicate directly, make decisions kind of on his own, and sometimes disregarding the structural standards that are already in place. Now, when you look at some of the tweet, tweets that come out, that might reflect that. You say, well, anybody could write that. Um, then when we go further down, what we've done here is we can compare Donald against anybody else. You just write it in here. So on this example, chosen Bill Gates. Again, most people know something about Bill. So if you're going to use uh, go into Donald and talk about not making any risk, according to this, that's not going to hit the mark. Now, if you're going into Bill Gates and talking about avoiding taking big risks, you, you're probably going to get his attention. So the first thing about this personality is it breaks it down into areas. And if you want, 
you can compare yourself against that person. So now, this is how Donald thinks of against myself. He's not as trusting as I am, he's more skeptical, so I need to take that into account when I'm speaking with, with Gordon, or with Donald, sorry. When we move down here, this is saying, look, in terms of the type of person we both are, I like to support and collaborate, where he's more of a, Donald's more of a captain, a driver, somebody that's in the steering seat. Okay, kind of interesting. Oh, look, here's something else called en Enneagram. You may recognize some of these individual tools that uh, have been used over the years. So it says that uh, Donald now is a protector. He tends to be self-confident, powerful, and assertive. And he generally enjoys engaging in debates and making di difficult decisions. So who knows? He could be in the right job. Something further down that even more people are aware of is Myers-Briggs. This may be something that you've had to go at uh, in your time. And so this is now giving us the profile of Donald, how he works on that. Okay, so that's interesting, maybe, and uh, their models are reasonably well known, but this is where it comes to the crunch. The things that come naturally to him is, for instance, saying something bluntly without details. Just look at Twitter. What energizes Donald? It's taking charge, amongst other things. What drains him? Deep research and analysis. This is suggesting don't put a 50-page report in front of him because he's not going to be interested. Interested. When we're speaking with him, it says, look, um, don't be afraid to disagree. Now, that's something that you and I might not be aware of. Actually, disagreeing with him, he sees as a positive thing. He does not really like um, people who agree with him all the time. Now, let's take it further. Let's say we're in a meeting with Donald. What are we going to do? Well, get straight to the point about what the meeting's about. He doesn't do niceties, this is saying. Keep it as short as possible. If you're going to email him, you know, be concise to the point. Never write, never write more than three sentences because he will lose your interest. And to commit to him, um, be confident when you're when you're in front of him. Ask him about his goals. That's something that he loves to talk about. And make an effort to focus the conversations and not going down telling stories on side roles, rows. It's just keeping it absolutely focused. And then look at this: how to negotiate. Stay focused on the goal. Don't grip, don't, don't drip from it. Um, project assertiveness and confidence. So if that's not naturally you, um, and you don't do that, you're, you're just not going to be able to negotiate with, with him at all. And then providing feedback to him. Now, providing feedback to a fiery character like Donald could be interesting. Um, so what he, he responds to, look, is creating friendly competition. He doesn't mind that type of thing. He likes a, a, a bit of banter and a bit of um, challenge back. And then what if you have a bit of a conflict with him? Well, don't let it fester because this is saying that he'll hold a grudge. And you may have seen in the term that he's been in office, uh, people uh, pe people leave their roles on, uh, quite often and frequently because this is suggesting they dr the issues have not been addressed right away and they're just left to um, become a grudge almost. And then look, um, it carries on strengths, blind spots and so on. Now, the reason for showing you this and Donald is that you probably know something about him, but this gives you more of an in-depth feel about him. Now, imagine this is you, okay, because this is this is story one, about you probably know yourself quite well. Be surprised if you don't by now. Um, but how are you perceived by others is something completely different. And by completing this yourself, what that will do, it will give you a view of your personality and how you project to other people, how they perceive you in the way that you negotiate with them, the way that you speak, the way that you give feedback, the way you do emails and, and so on. And here, look, it will actually uh, guide you in terms of relationship of what that person, how that person works and how you work and gives you a guide of how to, to work together and build the relationship. So in terms of yourself, this takes about 20 minutes, and I'll say right at the end, we'll give you 
uh, the link on how to do that. And it will help you. It's helped me for, for, for sure. And many of all of the customers we deal with, it's helped them understand how other people perceive them. And that has made a big difference to how they do business and, and win customers. So that's the first area. Back onto multimedia. So how do people see you? Well, how you impact people, as I say, once you, you've gone through this 20 odd minute exercise, uh, can be a, it will be a big eye opener because you may think you put things across in a particular way. And if you have a partner or you live with a partner, guess what? They will, they, they'll give you feedback. They'll tell you that actually it's not the way you think you put it across. And this is exactly what this does for you. It gives you an awareness of how other people see you. This piece about habits you may have seen before that it takes, as human beings, it takes us 20 to 28 days for something to become a habit. So if you're taking up jogging, for instance, for 20, the first 20 to 28 days, you have to think about it. You have to get your things on. You have to get your watch set. You have to look at the weather before you go, probably. You go out and it's an effort and then you come back. After 20, 28 days, you, you don't think about what you put on. You don't think about your watch because it becomes a bit unconscious. So if you've got a habit you want to change, you can change it in 20 to 28 days. If you want to form a new habit, you can form it, of course, within 20 to 28 days. It takes a bit of effort, takes a bit of focus, but can make and will make a huge difference to the way you go out and negotiate and work with people. And then training and coaching uh, was reading a bit recently i found quite interesting that when uh you you work for a corporation and i have and martin has and you probably have as well they tend to try and make you the good all-round corporate citizen and be good at everything i don't know about you i have never met that person yet but they don't i don't think they exist um so when what they found is when you're put on a training course and it's something that relates to your strength and your personality. Guess what? You're really interested. You write lots of notes. You come back and you might change a thing or two. When you're put on a training course or coaching course where it's it says blind spots here, weaknesses, whatever phrase you want to use, when it's aimed at that, trying to make you this all round better person, because it's not your passion and desire and the natural thing you do, within usually within 48 hours, you virtually retained none of what you were trained on or coached on because it's not part of your personality and your strength. So what we found, again, working with customers is that if somebody's got a skill, making them fantastic at it and giving them the right support, well, time and time again, that will get you a better result than if you're trying to make them good at, say, administration, which isn't their natural passion. And if you're a salesperson, and you're great at administration, mm, I'm not sure you're as great at sales as you could be. Um, so with those three things there, the impact you make on other people, new habits you can employ in, and um, ones you, you can remove, and then working with people on things they're, they're, they've are got passion about and they're skillful on, um, and making them fantastic at that, that's what makes the difference. Okay, so that's a bit about you, and you know, the impact on other people. Now let's talk about customers. So this this brain here, this bit here, you may have seen before, this is the ancient part of your brain. It's been around since humankind has ever been around. These two lobes at the front here are the modern piece. And this is, if you ever watched, read The Chimp Paradox by Professor Steve Peters, this is what he's talking about. That chimp on your shoulder, that little voice, is always telling you you can't do something. This modern piece here is your drive. And what happens as people tend to get older in general is this bit becomes more dominant. So in the end, people won't even go out in case they fall over because they fall over once in their life. So training, training your let's go for it more. Well, actually, can I, you'll never get rid of this because it's been with us forever. That, that will, will help in the way that you work with customers, and that makes sense. So look, there are a couple of things you can do. This is what it means. One is we can learn to speak in terms that the customer understands in their own language. The second thing is we can appreciate how they make decisions rather than how we do. So 
the insight of this is when you're going to meet somebody or it's a new customer opportunity or indeed it's an existing person that you already know have any insight in what languages they use and how they make decisions is the thing that makes the big difference let me show you what we mean so here look this is linkedin this is on google chrome this happens to be me and over here it says view personality so anybody that's on linkedin at all you can do this for so if i click that and you're going to meet me tomorrow it's now giving you everything about me that it's ever learned that i've ever put on onto linkedin and online so it says i'm a driver right I like to get things done like lively debate it says avoids institutional authority i don't know about martin or, or you that's why i left corporate life in the end i realized it wasn't for me now it says here look i need to i need a bit of help um so i'm going to have a meeting and i want to negotiate so here i click get advice and it, here it's telling me what to say or telling you what to say if we're meeting to get my attention actually that we could both do a little bit better we're in this together we seem to be aligned on this because I, I like relationships i like people it just makes sense to me uh, i understand your goal but i can only accept something so now we're into negotiation remember it's about negotiation i appreciate what you're saying um i can get part of the way there but i can't get all the way there with what we're able to to do for you and how about we start with okay so you've got me at the starting point there and that's what i love right how do we get there how do we start this how do we start this and, and kick it off as you go down here are the things um, it's suggesting to do it, here are the things it's suggesting not to do and as you go down it's just giving you things to avoid how things to do in a meeting how to email and so on and so on and so on so this tool uh, let me tell you a very brief story we used it with a, a customer who had been established four months okay this is a software development company that have been established four months they uh, work in a hospitality area where if you're a publican you usually fill in a book every month about how often the toilets have been cleaned how much beer wastage has been uh, people that come into work people that don't and so on so this company have dragged that industry offline online with no and they had no customers we had a look at a, a contact called chris before we went to see him chris is the md of a company that's got 750 pubs there. um it said a few things about chris it, it said that he's um he, he likes taking risks he likes to be first to do something he's got a creative mind when he's meeting he doesn't like to meet large groups of new people he's what's called a captain he likes to steer the ship and he moves quickly so what he doesn't like is heavy detail so one person went in we did a one-to-one -one. we talked about um getting going very quickly he would be the first to try this he'd be the first to market um he'd be in terms of significance he'd be there before anybody else in the industry um as he is the captain we were saying things like look we, we can fuel up the ship you just steer it you just steer it where it needs to go and we'll make sure you've got the uh the, the fuel to get there and in terms of moving quickly uh you know you can go now we can start rolling out now and we came out of that session or the person that went in that session came out with an order for 750 pubs to roll out to 329,000 pound contract from a company that only started four months ago when you when you speak to phil his name is who went in to see chris he will tell you 98 percent of that achievement is down to understanding the way that chris thought and the way that his personality worked and it and so so uh phil could present in that way so that is the power of um knowing how people think and how they operate before you go to see them okay so that's the, the second area now the third one let's ramp it up let's talk about your business now your business might be just you at the moment or it might have several people in it 
And the thing about business is you hear quite a lot about brand. In fact, some businesses spend millions on brand. And the reason they do that is they want you to think that what that's what that company is like. Well, the reality is if you've ever dealt with that company, you'll know what it's like. It could be that you love the account manager. You know, they do everything for you. But when you put an order in, um, it doesn't get dealt with or they don't deliver it when you want to or the bill comes out and it's incorrect. Um, so the personality of that business, the brand of that business is telling you one thing, the actual perception and how that business works is something else. So what I mean is, let's look at an example here. Here's a company that we work with who've got 16 people in that organization. They've been going 12 years and uh, one year ago, they their business dropped by 22% in six months. Great business, well-established, a leader in its field, their business dropped by 22% in six months. And when we looked at, you know, why is that? We did what we just we just done and shown you there. We actually, across the 16 people, spoke to each one individually about what we're doing. Three people thought it was a plan to get rid of them. Um, some uh, Two more thought they were being judged. But because we'd taken the time and trouble to talk them through what we're, we're wanting to achieve, they all took part. They were as willing as they could be to take part. So with the results, what it said is, look, um, these people with seven people here are extrovert in the way that they, they operate. So that you know they're quite open, they're quite quite can be quite animated and so on. And nine people are introverted. They they need to take a bit of time to think things through and, and come up with a different a different solution. And what was happening was the extroverts people, this is just generalizing, what was happening is you went into the office, was I've got an order, I need it now, why are you messing about? Get on with it. I just, it's got to get out now. There's nothing else going on. You need to get it done. The extroverted person on the other end is trying to think about it and just being shouted down all the time. So then you get stress, you get aggression, and you get um, uh, anything that's, uh, uh, it's an anti, it becomes anti, an anti team effort. People start to work against each other. So just those people being aware of these nine people and the other way around made a huge difference to how the business operates now. I'll, I'll explain in a minute. This is, this is Myers-Briggs, this particular, this particular overview. Sensing and intuitive, you can see the definitions around here. So look, 10 people um, work on facts. Six people prefer to, prefer to come up with ideas. Seven people here are very analytical, not emotional in the way they do business. The other nine people are almost the complete opposite. They've got to have a set of beliefs and values that they can work to. And over here, uh, judging not necessarily, it doesn't mean judging people. It means in the way that they, they think and, and operate. It's planned, it's well structured, it's in advance, it's very organized. Whereas this one's more as you go, more creative. Um, and here, look, 12 of the 16 people are in this, this planned, well structured, organized area. And four are in this more creative, um, being flexible type area. So what did all that mean? Well, when we brought it all together, what it meant was there were two things about this organization that were holding it back. Hence, you get 22% sales drop off in six months. The first one was that it, the business is very, very structured. Decisions are made uh, around spreadsheets. If you go into the office all around the walls, there were uh, wall charts measuring everything. Um, there was a uh, not very much risk taken. They'd been burned in the past, and, and thought they learned from that. Um, and when the decisions were made, were made, it led to things like if you wanted to work that company, first of all, you had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. You couldn't work with them without that. Secondly, there was a 28-page contract before you could work with them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now that's reducing their risk. It's making them feel good. It's very organised. It's very structured, and so on. But uh, many of the, the customers and suppliers were, you know, some of them were digital marketing companies. They just couldn't be spending time going through 28 pages of a, a contract and um, I probably never signed a, an NDA, non-disclosure agreement in their life. Um, so there was a mismatch. That was the first thing. Um, 
how we overcame that was when a decision was made being made one or two of these four people were brought in to the situation so for instance um part of their target market are farmers and uh they spent three months working on some campaigns to email what they do to farmers we dragged one of these people in they came willingly by the way and said what do you think they said well look if you think about it a farmer's on a tractor usually uh, quite a lot in the day why don't you text them <laughs> we all look around at um the, this her name was Faye, is Faye, and we, we turned around and went, do you know, that's quite a good idea. So they sent 100 texts and got eight orders, and they've, they've never had that many in, in their lives. So now, guess what, based on that, there's at least one or two of these people who are involved in every decision that organization makes. So there you go, the first thing was um, risk adverse, don't like taking risks, very structured, uh, very process orientated and there's there are three processes for everything so that started to break that that down with that, that organization the second thing is that when the stress came onto the business when it did start in getting busy and grow up uh, starting uh, the sales were coming in again uh, there was this undercurrent of stress people weren't talking to each other about it and what that meant was that around the coffee machines you had um sales slagging off accounts because they're not opening new uh, customers quickly enough the delivery people saying i don't know why you're doing that you know we we can only produce so much you're promising it tomorrow it's going to be two weeks all this that wasn't being spoken about in open that was being spoken about in teams and groups and around the coffee machines so it took a couple of months in fairness nearly three months to build a culture of openness where if if you had a if you were struggling and feeling a bit of stress and somebody somebody else what what happened was inevitably that was an extrovert and an introverted person because they understood each other much better from the exercise we went to they sorted it out and where they couldn't sort it out three of us here in that organization are called counselors it just happens that's our personality type so they drag us in and we, we just facilitate it and work it out and get it sorted the, the results in terms of that organization, they went from 22% loss of sales the previous six months to bringing it back to zero and growing it to plus 14 in six months. And the reason that they did that was because the personality of the company now matches its customer set and it takes the strengths of its employees and employs them, not just the three or four people who were putting these plans and decisions uh, together before. So there you go, three areas, yourself and how you are perceived by others. Before you go and meet anybody, whether you know them or not, just having a quick look at their personality and, and things that might help you in the way you structure your words or you, you, you put an agenda together for a meeting, if that person actually uh, responds to an agenda, or if you're making a phone call or an e email, how it can do it. So know how you're, you are seen by others. Um, makes you become more conscious about how people perceive you the second thing considering how your contacts think as you saw could win you the next 750 pub deal outlet deal if you happen to be a software developer company and your company's personality determines how it will grow in the last 12 months what we've learned is the thing that hold the company back is its personality not its aims not its ambition it's the way that it um, treats, works with its employees and uses their strengths to deliver what their customers want, i.e. a text on a tractor when you're out in the field. That's what gets you the business over your competition. Now, at the bottom here, I promised at the beginning, uh, let you know a bit more about it. This is called Crystal Nose. Uh, Martin has put the link into the chat box. And it says they're $29 a month. That's what, that's what they charge. Um, I'll tell you, if I was only left with $29 a month every month, uh, that's where it would go because that has made the biggest single difference to our business, our customers' business, uh, over everything else. Uh, also, if you want to pay annually in advance, like you do these days, they offer you 20% uh, discount over that. So I'd ask, you know, in terms of personality, have a think about it. How can it work for you? And, you know, if you, if you want to discuss it anymore, 
get in contact and uh, who, you know, who knows, we could work together on in, in, the, in the future. Okay, thanks very much, Martin. Back over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we'll uh, turn off the share and screen and see your lovely face again. <laughs> Welcome back. And thank you very much for going through that. It's a, a very quick and brief insight to what is an absolutely fascinating subject. And there's so many things you've touched on in there that I absolutely echo uh, experience wise. Uh, the old six P's, the perfect planning prevents, I'll let you insert the P for performance. Um, mm -hmm. It is one straight away and it goes for the preparation especially when you're preparing for for big negotiations or if you're on one-on-one -on -one sales meetings and things anything where you can be prepared in advance where you're understanding what the objections could be understanding the approach understanding how that's going to work it's always it's always valuable time spent and and in fact when you work with some of the bigger deals like you have done in the past uh, and certainly a 300 and 300 or thousand pound deal is nothing to be sniffed at um, putting that little bit of extra effort in just to make sure who it, who you know who it is that you're speaking to uh, and you can go in at the right level with the right kind of conversations is just so crucial um, and I think certainly something that everyone should be certainly investigating how they should be doing it um, and I still I, I love the whole thing about the personality inside business as well and I think that goes hand in hand with business values as well and, and how you kind of build a culture within a business and I'm pretty sure that there's a massive amount of uh, that we could talk about over that. Uh, and one thing I am conscious of, though, is we, we don't want to uh, have the interview right now. We are going to be spending some time on the 24th of uh, February, where we will be batting out uh, different experiences, uh, different ideas, etc., and then really get into to grips with uh, what you've used the tool for, how you've used uh, uh, psychometric profiling, personality profiling, uh, as a real um, ass, uh, tool in your weaponry to, to really help in your your battle against making sure you bring the right sales in and making sure you you are able to make those companies grow in the way that they should do um so guys uh you guys who are listening it's been great to see you online janine astrid menica uh, uh judith um Mohammed. it's been absolutely fabulous seeing you there i hope you guys have got something to take away from it uh for you guys that are watching it on recording again same thing with everybody Please send in your questions ahead of the 24th of February. This is an ideal opportunity how you can get some real answers from a sales expert on how you can uh, really start to work with these tools to get the best information you can and make the best opportunity you can uh, out of every time you sit in front of one of your clients. Uh, and also, I have a fantastic change agent, somebody who has transformed the lives of many people inside many benefits organizations uh, and this is one of the key tools that he uses for doing that so again bring the questions ready for the 24th and we'll have an absolutely fabulous interview and, and those questions so uh, I think the only thing left for me to say is thank you once again David for your time and your preparation in this sure. uh, I think you've certainly uh, brought to light a subject that we have touched on uh, in this group before and uh, yeah looking forward to speaking with you again on the 24th Okay, stay warm, stay stay for you. Thank you. Uh, absolutely, yes. Uh, it's always always interesting out there. What was it, Storm Dennis at the weekend? See, the end was see. Now in the chat room, everybody will be telling us what it's. <laughs> I want to say Carissa, but I'm not sure. <laughs> so, so last weekend it was Storm Ciaro or something, wasn't it, or Cairo or something, and and uh, yeah, the next next one that's coming up is Storm Dennis at next weekend. So yes, yeah, just. Okay. just Hold on to your roofs and whatever else you haven't got pinned down. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, enjoy yourselves and we will see you later. Bye for now. Thank you. Take care.